Hello friends, Kerrigan Skelly with Pinpoint Evangelism here with you today. I just wanted to take some time <clears throat> to do a video uh, regarding George Floyd and all the protests and riots and loots, looting going on. Um, I just realized I really hadn't said much publicly on YouTube about it, besides maybe if you watched that one street preaching video of me preaching in downtown Atlanta. Um, I believe it was a Saturday after the George Floyd murder. First, I want to say this, that what happened to George Floyd was wrong. That guy should not have had his knee in the back of his neck. Um, if you said he couldn't breathe, you should let him up, even if you think he's lying. The guy, you know, for crying out loud, was calling out for his mother. <clears throat> now, things have shown that he was on drugs. He had drugs in the system. Um, when the autopsy was done, uh, this guy was not a saint, so let's not make him one. Um, I've seen some trying to make him into a Christian. I don't believe that for a second. Maybe at one point in time he was. Maybe he was doing some good at one point in time. I don't know. But when this all happened, he, was, he wasn't doing good, to say the least. And so we see these things happen, and... Automatically, people assume it had something to do with the color of George Floyd's skin. Or something to do with the color of the cop's skin. They say, now that thing in and of itself is racist. Okay? I, when I see that cop, when I see that man, I don't look at them primarily as their skin color. I primarily look at them as someone who's made in God's image. Not someone who has a certain color skin. Besides that, the Bible makes it very clear that from one blood, in Acts 17, one blood, God has made every nation of man to on the face of the earth. So in other words, we're all the children of Adam. We're all the children of Noah. We're not different races. It's because we had different skin colors. We are the same race, the human race. The only race made in God's image. The only race which Jesus Christ died for. The only race by which God is willing to forgive of their sins by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. That's the race we are. And although there are times, and Jesus talked about this in Matthew 10, that there'll be division amongst us, the division is this, righteous and unrighteous. That's the only division God's going to make, is righteous and unrighteous. Not black and white, not old and young, not fat and skinny, not uh, blue eyes and brown eyes. You know, whatever. Not rich and poor. God's going to divide people. Righteous and unrighteous. And so we need to make sure as, as followers of Jesus that we respond to these things properly. And I say emphatically that black lives do matter. Just like all lives matter. And me saying all lives matter right after I say black lives matter is not lower the value of black lives because black lives are included in all lives. But I utterly abhor and despise the BLM Black Lives Matter movement. It's completely anti-Christ, anti-authority. They want to completely obliterate the police. They want to completely obliterate authority. They, they're racist into themselves. Many of them. I've seen people who are protesting things peacefully. They have the right to do that. It's, that's one of our rights is under the Constitution. But I would encourage you as followers of Jesus to not be hypocrites. Okay? Let me propose to you a scenario. Let's say that instead of George Floyd dying uh, partly by asphyxiation because the knee was in the back of his neck, was that contributed to it, but it wasn't the only thing that contributed to his death, what I've read. Let's say instead... These guys came up to him in white jackets and they had an MD on it and had a stethoscope around their neck and a mask on their face, surgical mask around their face. And they <clears throat> pinned him to the ground and instead of putting a knee in the back of his neck, first they cut his arm off, and his other arm, and his leg, and his other leg. And then they crushed his, his skull. And then from there, they vacuumed up this brought this big vacuum onto the street and vacuumed up his remains gently into a vacuum cleaner and disposed of George Floyd in that way. I'm 
imagine the outrage, and rightly so. Imagine the screaming of horror, and rightly so. Imagine the people who would most likely, if they're watching this, would take action, and rightly so. But you see, friends, that's what happens every day, day in and day out, to unborn children. Black, white, Asian, Native American, whatever you want to call them. How are we going to divide them up? They're human beings made in God's image here Jesus died for. And Jesus had a special place in his heart for children saying, Do not forbid them from coming to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Unless you humble yourself and become like a little child, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. This is what the Bible says about this, about children. What Jesus said about children. And people are killing children in this way. As because I'm preaching at a, an abortion clinic just south of Atlanta. I've been preaching at it basically weekly. I missed a couple weeks, but for the most part weekly. I've been preaching at it. And they even list on their website one of the ways they kill it is they they vacuum the baby up and they don't they don't call it a baby uh, they say they gently vacuum uh, the remains of the uterus of of that's in the uterus whatever language they use they, they try to spin it in a way where it makes them sound not so bad um, but it's, it's disgusting in God's eyes all injustice is disgusting but I want to know this if God said that, Jesus said that about children, and they're innocent, not sinners, babies are innocent, but nothing wrong. Um, and and they're and Jesus loved them like that. And then we have a man who's a sinner, George Floyd. And people have outrage about it, but there's no outrage about the unborn children slaughtered every day in their mother's womb. If you have an outrage about George Floyd, but not about, but about abortion, you're a hypocrite. You have a log in your eye. You take it out, man. Open your eyes and see the truth. And babies are being slaughtered. Almost a million every year in America. Slaughtered. In their mother's womb. And a good proportion of them are black babies. Even though, I think, it's, if I remember the sticks is right, 13% of America is black people. But 36% of the abortions are black people. That's crazy, man. And here I am out in front of these abortion clinics, and the one I go to, <clears throat> all skin colors, people come there, but it's predominantly black skin people who come there are brown skin, whatever you want to call them. They come there more than anybody else. Now, it's a neighborhood they're in, or just a proportion of them coming there, I have no idea. But the fact is, you know, we need to stand out in front of abortion clinics if we care about black lives, that's where they're being slaughtered at the most. And that's where they're the most voiceless, the most defenseless, the most weak, the smallest, the, the most insignificant among us are these unborn children. And no one, barely anyone's doing anything about it. Black Lives Matter definitely ain't doing anything about it. Because they probably don't care about abortion. <laughs> I got done the worship clinic a little bit ago. I was going back for this this one woman who didn't care she was murdering her child. Didn't care to hear what I had to say. She knows she's murdering. She knows she deserves hell. And she just raged on. She, that's the baby who needs us to speak up. That's the that's the black person who needs to speak up for them right there. Now, once again, if you want to protest for George Floyd peacefully and stand up for ISIS, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you this. If you'll do that, but we'll stand up for a little black babies. You're a hypocrite. You have no right to say anything about anybody. Because they're being slaughtered by the thousands. All the time. And they're having their arms and legs. They're being ripped limb from limb. Having their skull crushed and being vacuumed out. That's abominable. Not to happen. And so we, we're, all, we're all the same race, number one. In the scripture, the only kind of races you see are running races, like the race Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 9. And that's the kind of race where, that the Bible talks about. The Bible never talks about races. And if it did, it never divides up by skin color. The Bible really ever talk about skin color at all. 
It's very rare for it to say anything at all about skin color. And people make such a huge deal about it because of America's history, America's past. But listen, you get past that color of someone's skin, man. You need to love everybody. And if you, I'll just say this, if you um, treat someone differently because of something they're born with, you're unrighteous. Period. Whether it's skin color, eye color, hair color, how tall they are, how big their nose is, what their ears look like, you know, how big their hands are, how small they are. If you treat anyone differently because of the way they're born, no, or something they have no control over themselves, you are unrighteous. Period. Forget about just skin color. Anything that they're born with, and you treat them unfairly, you're unrighteous. Because that's not the way God is. God does not act that way towards people. God does not play favorites. And the Bible says that babies are fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, what children are when they're born is God's doing. With the exceptions of things like, you know, the moment when they're doing drugs and causes problems with the child. Obviously, that's not God's doing. But aside from those things, if the mother's not introducing any harmful substance into her system while she's pregnant with the child, then what the child is when it's born is the is the it's the father's doing. It's God's doing. God the Father's doing. And who are we to criticize what he does? And who are we to stop the process of his creative intelligence as he's knitting this child, forming this child, this unique and distinct DNA? Who are we to disrupt that process and, and take life into our own hands and destroy another life? So imagine the outrage if that happened to George Floyd. And rightly so. And where is the outrage, oh hypocrites? Where is the outrage for the unborn children who suffer at the hands of their own mothers, whose mothers pay hitmen who pose as doctors and nurses to destroy the life of their child? Here in America, we talk about being the um, land of the free, home of the brave, where people are born free. Yeah, that's true. They're born free. But it's a shame they're not free to be born. It's a shame they're not free to be born. So people need to open their eyes, stop being hypocrites. Not all peace, not all police are, are wicked, like Derek Chauvin is. Not all uh, people are treated unfairly because of their skin color. And not many people, I think it's very few people, treat other people unfairly because of their skin color. Ezekiel 18.20 says this, The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. You see, so we don't hold people accountable for the sins of others. You can't hold all people of a certain skin color accountable for what another person of the same skin color does. And you don't hold uh, every policeman accountable for what one policeman does. It's absurd to have that mindset, to have that the thinking go through your head. So friends, we must judge righteously. We can't judge wickedly. We have to judge righteously like God does. And God will judge people according to their own sins, according to their own crimes. That's the way God judges. And we do the same thing. <clears throat> now you think changes need to happen? Okay, change needs to happen. Make change happen. But you know what way change is really gonna happen in America? It's not through politics. It's not through uh, being a Democrat or a Republican, or from switching from one side to the next. It's not going to come through the president or the, the politicians you have locally. Governor, mayor, police chiefs. The way true change, true lasting change will happen in America is through repentance. And the Bible says, how should they believe and I will not hurt? How can they hear without a preacher? So what America needs is not ultimately not police reform. 
or new politicians or even new police officers. He doesn't need a lack of racism. That's not what it ultimately needs. What it ultimately needs is this, the gospel he preached. He needs more preachers of righteousness to preach the word of God and to do what is right to people as they're preaching to them, to handle themselves properly, to lead people to Jesus Christ who will transform them and change them. And Jesus will change a racist person, a violent person, an unjust person, someone who doesn't judge righteously, and change them to a holy and just person. This is what happens when they're born again. This is what happens. This is what America needs. So if you really want to change America, even though you have the right to protest, I support that peacefully, that rioting and looting. Um, you have the right to be angry about what happened to George Floyd because it was unrighteous. The real way, if you really want to see change in America, you need to be a follower of Jesus Christ yourself, number one. Number two, you need to call others to do the same thing. When that happens, real change, real lasting change will happen in America. But until then, it's all just a facade. It's all just a stalemate. It's all just a de delay. Because the Bible says in the last days, the love of most will grow cold and lawlessness will abound. The Bible says in the last days, nation will rise against nation. Ethnos, this Greek word is ethnos. Ethnos against ethnos in the last days. So the devil's having his way. Don't fall for his schemes. And one of the schemes of the enemy in the last days towards believers is to get them to take their focus off of Jesus and put their focus on everything going around the world to them. And they get so overwhelmed, their love grows cold because they're not staying close to Jesus. Love grows cold towards God and towards others. And they become just like the world around them. Just like the world around them. So don't be deceived, friends. Stay close to the Lord. Stay close to the, to the Word. Stay close to prayer. And be a preacher of righteousness. Share the truth. Stand up for righteousness. Stand against sin. Stand up for Jesus and his gospel. That's the real way to change your world around you. Anyway, just some thoughts I had on this. Hopefully these are encouraging to you and bless you in some way. God bless.